Shall we begin? Hey there, boys and girls. Bob Kearns, the unsung photographer, and I promised you we were going to have a little talk about light meters and the controversy behind them. Well, as you well know, all the modern digital cameras that you buy all have included some sort of light meter. Um, it's what they call a reflective light meter, and it's built into the camera, and it's generally a very nice piece of equipment. However, by the nature of being a reflective light meter, there are some restrictions. The other thing about in-camera light meters is they're a little complicated. Not that light meters aren't a little complicated to begin with, but the ones in your camera have usually several different modes you can select from. There's matrix metering, uh, you have uh, spot metering, and you usually have center-weighted metering. These are usually all settable and available to you through the reflective meter in your camera. Well, if I haven't lost you in complex land yet, just hang in there. Here's the other trick with the meter in your camera. Most of the time, it is doing a best guess. And if you're using the automatic modes in a camera, like aperture priority or shutter priority or program mode, then what the camera manufacturer suggests you do and the modus of operandi for using one of these things is to look at your meter, uh, take a picture, let the camera make its automatic decision, and then see if the picture is over or underexposed for your subject. If it is, then you have another dial called exposure compensation which I like to refer to as the fix me button, which you guess, you roll it either up or down, and certainly some practice will help you know which is which. And then you take the photograph again, and hopefully you will have fixed it by dialing in your exposure compensation. So you have to sort of sit and ride that dial. So if you're doing photography at a little higher level, if you want to get out away from the idea of letting the camera make those exposure decisions for you, then it's time to consider learning how to use a light meter and picking one up. A light meter basically gives you all the information you need to know about the light in your photograph. And then you can take the settings that you've educated yourself about with a meter and put them in the camera and then shoot the photograph. This is something that you'll see um, guys that are shooting big 8x10 cameras where one shot's going to cost them 20 bucks. You don't see them out there making test exposures and running them home and developing them and saying, oh, that was a little underexposed. I better go do it again. Um, commercial photographers, people that are making a living with their photography, uh, you don't see a lot of that, oh, well, I'll fix it later attitude because that costs them money. So now they only have not only have to spend the time uh, doing the shoot, but now they have to spend even more time sitting in front of a computer correcting errors that could have been easily fixed by paying attention to what they were doing in the first place. Certainly, I am not against Photoshop or Lightroom or any of those tools, but they should be tools to help you develop a good quality exposure that you've taken with your camera whether you want to do something artistic with it or you just want to um, emphasize certain parts of the photograph, uh, if you want to add detail into your shadows more than you uh, could get uh, in an exposure or uh, you want to control highlights or you want to do uh, something creative, these are all great things. <clears throat> but you should still get a good exposure the first time. And this is what a light meter helps you do. That's the tool to get good exposure all the time. Now, I've got a bunch of meters sitting here in front of me uh, from various eras and uh, of various capabilities. <clears throat> this is probably the oldest beauty here. Uh, this is what you would use back in the 19, 
oh, 70s and 80s, into the 90s, I suppose, or even earlier to that. Uh, and this is an incident light meter. Incident light meter means it's not reflective. You don't point it at something and have it reflect the light. You go up to the object or your subject, and you push this button and release it. And this little needle here will go back and forth and give you a measurement of the light. So here in the shadows, uh, let me take a reading here. If I was shooting a photograph here, 1 125th of the second, it would be an F8, assuming that my ISO was 100. Unfortunately, uh, the downside to some, a meter like this, uh, which I bought for 40 bucks, by the way, <clears throat> is it's not a flash meter. This won't help you in the studio or with flash. This is a strictly a daylight meter. The plus to having one of these isn't so much for your digital camera, though you can use them for your digital camera. It's a good idea to practice with it. Uh, but it's more for a film camera that doesn't have a meter or uh, a lot of the film cameras now, the older ones, you can't get batteries for the built-in meters and they're reflective and have their own problems. So having a good meter that you trust uh, and you're used to using for daylight uh, is a good idea for that particular application. Like right behind me here, this is a, uh, an old Polaroid Model 195. It's not an automatic Polaroid. It's what you would use in a studio. So I would set the meter, I would meter my subject, and set the front of the camera. I can set all the settings manually and uh, use that in the studio. Unfortunately, nowadays, uh, we're on the last few packs of the uh, Fujifilm. They've stopped making it, so I've got a few packs left, so I bring it out for special occasions and for a little bit of fun, but when that's gone, it's over. This will wind up sitting on a shelf as a, a pleasant reminder of days gone by. Um, <clears throat> Let's go the next step up the line here and we'll look at meters. This is a top of the line Siconic. Uh, what's the model on this baby? This is a model 408. Well, it's actually probably middle of the line. But it also has, if you can see here, you slide this down and it's got a, a see through item which also has a what they call a spot meter, which is a reflective meter like you would have in your camera. But if you're doing landscapes where you're shooting a mountain far away, you would go use this and take readings off different parts of the landscape <clears throat> and then calculate that for averages to and your dynamic range and uh, use that for landscape photography. Actually, what I like about this baby is it has the uh, wonderful Siconic Dome here. They have a special, Lum Lumisphere is the name for that. And you could set this for um, your ISO and either your f-stop or your shutter speed. In this case, uh, we'll set our ISO to 200. Uh, our shutter speed will be, well, close as I can get on this way. I have it set up a 60th of a second. And I'll take a reading. Oh, I should have this set on flash mode. It's daylight. It's telling me uh, two thousandth of a second <laughs> at f2.8, but we know we're not going to do that. So we've got to go fiftieth of a second, thirtieth. So this is telling me uh, about f20 at sixtieth of a second, but fifty is a little slower, so f22 is about right. Fair enough. That's another light meter. Now let me explain a couple things while we're talking about these meters. Because you're going to get lost quickly. Let's talk about what is a good exposure. Why do we bother going through this? A good exposure is <clears throat> when you take your photograph. The shadows in the photograph still maintain detail. You can still see what's in the shadows. You can tell what it is. Or the texture of it. But you can see detail. And the highlights, the brighter part of your photograph, are not pure white. They still retain detail, so you can see the texture and what, it are, what is in those areas. So the distance between those two points measured in stops of light 
Remember, stop is twice the light or half the light, depending upon which way you're going, is uh, the dynamic range of the photograph. Now, dynamic range is defined in film cameras by the film. The camera really doesn't have much to do with it. It's all about what the film can capture. Dynamic range in a digital camera is all about the sensor and the electronics around it. So it's very much about the camera. So dynamic range as advertised in a D800, I think is about 12 stops. It might be 13, 12 or 13 stops. It's pretty wide. Um, film is advertised at less than that, probably around six or seven stops. But what you actually get from a photograph versus what's advertised are different. That's not necessarily the case. It's like uh, a car that they say gets so many miles to the gallon. Well, I guess if it's going downhill with the wind behind it and uh, the tires are bald and, and you know, and it's all icy and it's just sliding, the wheels aren't actually turning, then you get great gas mileage and that's what they put on the window sticker. Uh, your dynamic range in a camera is kind of the same thing. Now here is a very, very popular meter. You see these around quite a bit. And these actually come in different colors. They're kind of fun. I think there's a red one, a green one, a gray one. And this is a model 308S. And we turn this one on. And this isn't quite as fancy, but it is a basic light meter. It tells you what you need to know. Uh, I'm going to set my shutter speed here for 45th of a second, which is pretty close to 50. Uh, my ISO's at, uh, I'm going to change that to 200. And we'll take that reading under my chin here. Oops, it's still on flash, my bad. Did it again. 45th of a second. And now it's saying about an F16. Well, maybe if I get it out from under my beard. F19. All right, so it's around that range. It's a little different. But the sun's going in and out from behind clouds, so I'll buy a little difference from reading to reading. But that's the Seconic Flashmate L308S. That's a pretty nice meter. If you're only using it once in a while, and you're just using it for flash in the studio, this is a nice little meter to have. Uh, I would highly recommend that one. Uh, this other meter here, this is a, um, a fancier meter, but it's uh, older and it's probably still fairly expensive. I bet you might pay $250 for one of these, 200 bucks. Uh, the uh, red meter, the little one, you can probably get for, I don't know, just somewhat over 100 uh, look around for a used one. Used, used, used. Now, at the other scale of things, this is Seconic's brand new meter. This is the L478DR. And this is one fancy son of a gun. Turn this devil on here. And it's almost like a little iPhone. Uh, it's thicker. It's light. Uh, the, the sphere turns on it. It indeed does have a spot attachment, but I have to take this off. Then I put the spot attachment on. Then I can do the same spot meter I can with the fancy meter. Uh, this is $350 ballpark, but this is all touch controls. It will tell you the mix between flash and daylight in a photograph. It has a lot of fancy high-end functions. You can go and with a calibration target, uh, take some photographs, feed it into the Seconic software, and actually calibrate this meter uh, so it, you can watch where your readings are versus the dynamic range of your camera. So you can take a reading of the shadows, a reading of the highlights, and see where you sit. Uh, in the, within what your camera is capable of. So it's a very, very handy tool. But again, this is for a pretty high-end um, purpose. It's not something that you need. Uh, there's certainly a lot of things here you can learn if that's your intent, if you're going to do high-end photography, product photography, uh, fashion photography, uh, high-end portraiture photography. 
uh, then it's a great tool to have. But pricey and fancy and also very cool. Here, let me show you this, the spot attachment. <clears throat> uh, it comes in this cool little bag. The case, by the way, you have to buy separately that holds them both. It comes with a case, but it just holds the meter. And then uh, if you buy the attachment for spot metering that this is, you have to buy it separately. It's another hundred bucks. And it's essentially this little periscopy device. And as I was sort of half showed you earlier, take that. And then you put this on here. If I can get it right. There we go. And there's your spot meter. You just take it, you point, and then take your meter reading. That's exactly how that works. There's a little targeting circle inside. Very cool. So, those are light meters. Why are they controversial? A lot of old school photographers live and breathe by these things. I'm one of them. I think that uh, light meter is a necessary part of your kit. It's a tool you should learn how to use. It's a tool you should use consistently. However, having said that, I don't always use them. Uh, if I'm out someplace shooting casually, if uh, I'm not getting paid for the shoot, if there's a If I'm just out having some fun, I'm not. I sometimes don't drag these along. Uh, it's the big one here, it's expensive. I wouldn't want anything to happen to it. Uh, if I'm shooting film, if I have one of my old film cameras out, like the Hasselblad or Bronica or one of the older cameras, uh, then I'll bring this beauty. Or if I want to go electronic, I'll bring the 308. So you don't always have to have a light meter, but if you're shooting in a studio, if you're shooting with flash, you should have one. Just remember, boys and girls, even if you're on the right path, you'll get run over if you just sit there, so keep moving. All right, take it easy, and I'll see you next time. Shall we begin?